Greetings, Arkham Forge, Arkham Smiths. This is James Smith coming back at you with another episode of Tips and Tricks. In this one, I'm going to cover some of the new stuff that just came out in the past week, having to do with more of the campaign file system that we're starting to see. This was just uh, within the past couple of days opened up to the public, and it's been on the test stream for a couple of weeks. That way, those of us who are on the test stream could try and break it. As I'm sure you saw if you're in the Discord channel, uh, Lee and I break it quite often. And now it's been released to the publics, which means that it's very stable and it's good enough to just throw out there and let everybody use it. Now, one of the first things you're going to notice that's new is this new button here, the Worlds button. You're going to click on that because you can't go into Cartographer until you've created a world. As you can see here, I've already got a couple of worlds created. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to create a new one. We're going to name it Tips and Tricks. Just because, you know, creative, right? Anyway, so got my world created I'm gonna select it and after that close that then we'll click on cartographer and we get this new menu this new menu is actually coming is actually going to be part of all the campaign uh, control stuff this is going to let us move our maps around control where they're at control which maps load and if you look oh, wrong one if you look if you haven't created a folder system in your maps folder yet you're going to be able to uh, that can be very similar to the one I've got. And once you've got it and you've got your maps and everything in it, as you can see, the maps have a few extra parts here. So like here, got the favorite button, which that's going to be important here in a moment. Des designates it as a map. This here is the name of the map, the date that it was last accessed, and any tags that you want to add to it. So say Perdition's Daughter is the name of the adventure that this is in. So I could just use that as a tag. So one of the first things you're going to do before you actually go in and can start working on maps is you're going to select the favorite maps that you want to work on. And these save from one session to another. So if the next time you log in, you want to work on the same maps, you can just load them right up, go into the cartographer, and great. Now it's important to note that if you don't select any favorite maps, when we go into the cartographer, which we do by clicking on this red X button right up here, click on it you can see there's nothing there. And if we come out to the main screen into scenario and then the load map, there's none there either. And that can be frustrating. So make sure that you are selecting some favorite maps. And the way we do that is once you're in the cartographer, return to the file system here with map management and then come in here and we are going to select some maps. Now the order that you click the stars in is going to be the order that it shows from top to bottom that the maps are going to appear in. So I clicked this one here first, then this one, then this one. And if you look, they appear top to bottom in the order that I clicked on them. Now that's great and everything. So we've gotten there and we're going to select one of the maps to start with. And I'm going to select this one here because I know it loads quickly. And one click, it loads, you're done. Want to switch to another map, click on the next one. It loads. This one's a little bigger, and as you can see, lot, lots, lots, and lots of people. Um, so if I do something that changes the map fundamentally, like say I move that guy there, which I do, and then I choose to go here, it automatically prompts me to save. So if you haven't saved any, or if you don't want to save, you just click yes. If you do want to save, you click no. In this case, I'm going to load anyway because I don't want to save the change that I made. Pardon me. And back to the map that I was working on. This is all great. It's going to be quick. It's going to be really easy to use, especially in the scenario. Once you've got all the maps, you can load up all or favorite all the maps you're going to be using for that night, or at least that you suspect you'll be using for that night, and be fully prepared. One of the other new features that they added was this here, Save as New Map. And what that does, it allows you to save the map that you're currently working on. So this one right here, click Save New Map and say I want it to be another name, we give it a name, click OK, and it'll save it as a new map file with a new name. I'm not going to do that because I don't like cluttering up my stuff, but that's how you do it. So we're going to go back to map management. We're going to unfavorite these, then we're going to create a new map. Now, the way we do this is we select the folder we want the map to appear in. I'm going to have it appear in the main map file there, and then we're going to create it. Another really creative name. And there it is. 
Now, as you can see, when you create it, it doesn't have the favorite symbol checked. Click on it, close that, then it loaded it, and we can work on it. And that segues us right into the next thing I was going to talk about. So I got my new map here. Got this great adventure I want to run. I've got actual JPEGs or PNGs of the maps, and I want to use those rather than handcraft the map from scratch. Lots of people do that. I personally don't, but to each their own. I don't judge. So, But if you do want to do that and you want to import a map file, a map image file, what we're going to do is we are going to choose the one. This one here is called Below Canabras. It is a map that I've been working on, or not working on. This is a map that I pulled out of one of my uh, adventure paths, Wrath of the Righteous for Pathfinder. It's one of the first few maps that your party gets to go to. So as you can see, I've imported it. We're good there. Now we want to get the grid to line up. So what we're going to do is, I know a lot of people try and do it this way, but there's actually an easier way. So what you're going to do is, let's move it so that way I can see. Here's the native grid section. So hold down shift. It's going to turn this center button green. Then you're going to zoom it right over to here. Line it up as best you can. If you need to, zoom in really close. That makes this a little easier to center it. And centering it is going to be important for how the grid plays out in the in the uh, future parts of this. So, got it centered. I'm now centered on a grid intersection. That's important because the next thing you're going to do is you're going to hold down control. So that way it snaps everything to grid. And then you're going to shift it until it, lie, until it snaps to an intersection of the grid there. Now, as you can see, that starts to line everything up, but it's not yet quite perfect. So you're going to play with the grid until your size comes in. And I don't think I quite have a perfect. There we go. So let's get this. Zoom in a little more. I'm going to try and line this up a little better. There we go, and then we're going to, oh, nope, that didn't work. Okay, so then we come here, we snap it to grid, zoom out, that looks a little better. So, then you can adjust the size to where the grid lines up and is about the same size. Now, the problem that you're going to run into is the farther you get away from your center point, the more the native grid is not going to match up with the toolkit grid. That's just the nature of the beast, especially with Paizo maps, just because most of Paizo maps are hand drawn. So kind of got to live with it unless you have a way to remove the native grid off of the uh, imported map. Some of the other mapping programs allow you to do that. But if you're pulling an image straight out of an adventure or a PDF, it doesn't. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, talking a lot makes me yawn. Okay, so that brings us right into the next part. Once you have your beautiful map, you're going to lock it in place. Then you want to add light barriers, and that is actually pretty easy to do. So we got our barrier tool here, and we're going to come down here. And as you can see, this hand is not doing anything. You draw straight lines. That's all cool. I'm going to erase them. So if you don't do anything else, and you use the barrier tool, it just draws straight lines. You take your other hand, you hold down shift, it switches it into free for, for a freehand mode, which allows you to do this. And this. And I know it's not perfect, but I'm just trying to do it quickly so that way I don't take up too much of your time with your video or with my video. Then I'm going to throw one of my tokens in here. Bear in mind, tokens are not yet official. These I actually imported as objects. And I have them set up as objects. And then during the game, I move them so that way um, we have a visual representation because my, uh, my battle mat is a TV that's mounted on the wall. So playing with minis isn't really an option. So got the token in there. We're going to give them a light source. Then I'm going to set it to four, and this is going to be important here for something I'm going to talk about here in a bit. Then we're going to drop the lights. 
and as you can see the barrier appears to be working because if you cross it you can see where it's blocking the light or if we move up here this kind of showcases a little better the barriers work if we switch to the player view let's turn that off switch to the player view you can clearly see hey yeah it's working great all right so the next thing i want to talk about now that that's all done said and done importing maps from other uh from other images is really easy oh that light actually is working out perfectly for this next part so we're going to move it over here let's bring my palette tool back i'm going to come up here we're going to switch to tiles because it shows up better on tiles and we are going to use these guys we'll create a really big section here then I'm going to zoom in so for those of us that play Pathfinder in D&D this is going to be important because the way that the light is set up right now it is a radius of what, however many squares you set it to and what that means is, is from center point here let, let me center him here I'm going to lock this in place that way you don't keep grabbing it because it's going to be easier to illustrate it from here so got the guy center point of the grid He's lined up, he's ready to go. And if you count out, one, two, three, four. That's how far out the light goes. And by the time it gets out here, it's really shadowy. And just beyond that, it goes to full darkness. It's great, it's beautiful, it works the way it's intending to, or currently intending to, which all the lighting stuff is going to change once we get into uh, version 0 0.5. That's when Nathan's going to do a lot of work on changing the way the lighting works. For now, however, that is how it works, which is great for a lot of stuff, but for D&D and Pathfinder, it doesn't really fit how the lights work in the game. So this is my recommendation. With first a quick explanation of how the lights actually work in those two games. So in Pathfinder and D&D, say for instance you have a torch. It's got a light radius of 20 feet. What this means in game is, is that the first 20 feet is bright light. The second 20 feet, so from 20 to 40 feet, it's a shadowy light. And once you get beyond 40 feet, then it becomes darkness. Now, races changed how that works, but that's assuming a humanoid race with no dark vision or uh, low light vision. That's how the straight light works. With this only going out and darkening once it hits 20 feet, it doesn't work the way that it's supposed to in the, in the actual Pathfinder or D&D game. So the way that we can uh, accommodate this is come up here, select our radius, and we double. And as you can see, immediately that changed things. Let me zoom out a little bit. So the first, wait for the auto save. The first one, two, three, four, fairly bright, just like they're supposed to be. Then we get into the second set one two three four when you get out here to eight squares which is 40 feet if you're using the five foot square system then we hit the darkness right here it just goes to to the current representation of pitch black and that actually works how it's supposed to for pathfinder as well as dnd sorry i keep checking to make sure that i'm still recording because i've been having some problems with obs but beyond that that covers it double the radius it gets it to work as it's supposed to in D&D and Pathfinder and in all honesty any other RPG game where it's using lighting and you're wanting the lighting effect to be more realistic so that way it expands out and then you got the dark or the bright section the darker section then darkness um, beyond that really nothing else to cover in this episode it's going to be a shorter one than normal rather than the usual 20 to 25 minutes looks like I'm rolling in at right around 15 um, if you got any questions or comments, throw them in the section down below, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully you guys uh, are still really enjoying my videos. One last thing I need to mention. So it's currently the 10th of February, and about a month GaryCon happens in Lake Geneva. I know that Nathan and Dante from Arkham Forge Tabletop are both going to be there. I will be there as well. So if you guys want to come up and meet us all, that would be awesome. Tickets are really reasonable. You can get them at GaryCon.com. Feel free to grab some. Come see us. I know there's still plenty of tickets left because I just checked right before I started making this video. Come out, see us. Have fun. 
meet some of the big names in in the industry in the uh, tabletop RPG industry. I know that there's going to be a lot there. Monty Cook, I believe, was going to be there. Margaret Weiss, the creator of Dragonlance, is going to be there, plus a bunch of other folks. And it's a great time to get a uh, new product. So, any questions, comments, like, share, you know what to do. Have a great night, folks.